Hello, my name is Mark Bernard. My family's been coming here to church for quite a while now. Glad you could all be with us today. We as humans always seem to be trying to improve ourselves. Every year around New Year's Eve, people make New Year's resolutions, hoping to change their lives. Personally, I seldom make New Year's resolutions. But when I was younger, my mother encouraged me to pick something I could do to improve myself each year. Frankly, I rarely succeeded in keeping these New Year's resolutions for more than a couple weeks. Generally, I think we overreach when making New Year's resolutions and doom ourselves to failure. Just for amusement, go to your local bookstore and take a look for the self-help section. It's usually not very hard to find. Surprisingly, it's a pretty big area, generally. I assume it's because there's such a large demand for these types of books and they keep a lot on the shelves just to keep us, the consumers, happy. Some of us, I'm sure, buy these books with good intentions of making changes in our lives. I hope that they work for at least a few of these people. If not, we're making a huge industry without much to show for it. Maybe it's just my cynical nature that makes me think these books aren't very effective. I checked on Amazon, and some of the popular titles right now are The Anxiety and Phobia Workbook. And you rest assured, it is recommended by therapists. I understand we all have anxieties and phobias, but I wonder how much good a workbook's really going to do you. Another title, Good Vibes, Good Life, might be an interesting read at this point in 2020. Get Out of Your Head. If you're in the self-help section of your bookstore, that's probably fairly good advice. The power of discipline. If you had the power of discipline, would you really need the book? And if you could really achieve the power of discipline, would you really need the book? Why do I do that? If you're capable of answering that question, you probably don't need the book. Even popular television preacher Joel Osteen is jumping into the, on the bandwagon with the title, Empty Out the Negative. And that may be interesting to read for a lot of people after the 2020 we have had. The Bible should be every Christian self-help book. It contains historical accounts of past problems of other believers, along with good and sometimes bad solutions to their problems. If you're wondering about the end of times, read Revelations. But if you're struggling with coveting something of your neighbors, you may want to skip the story of David and Bathsheba. A small group of men have been studying Revelations for a while now here at the church. I recently joined them, and I'll be honest with you, I haven't read the Bible on a very regular basis for the last five or more years. As a child, my parents insisted I read the Bible. So I have read the Bible many times over the years, and I've also studied Revelations with a young pastor fresh out of the Methodist Seminary when I was a teenager. Nothing like a young, ambitious pastor trying to force Revelations down our throat and explain all of the many symbols and funny wording that comes with that book. It was almost a uh, Amusing at times, watching John, John try to get us excited about the subject. As we've delved into revelations, as usual, I am amazed at how what many consider to be an old, dated, and dusty book can have so much to offer if we open our eyes and our minds. It's easy for us to read the old English of the King James translation and chuckle about the wording and scratch our heads about what the author may mean. But beneath it all, there is inspiration and practical knowledge of what God expects from us. I'm always am amazed that a book with this collection of writings, letters, and historical accounts by a diverse group of writers, many from different time periods, and many from different points of view can all reference each other and tell the same stories with such symmetry. 
John's account in Revelations can be correlated back to many of the prophecies from the Old Testament, as well as letters from Paul and Timothy, to name just a few sources. While Paul and Timothy, <clears throat> while Paul and Timothy definitely knew John, they were not in direct communication with John when he was writing Revelations, as he was imprisoned on an island. I doubt John had access to their writings either, since they were writing to the churches in Thessalonia, Corinthia, and other places where they administered. Yet all of the information flows together and corroborates each other. This in spite of the fact that the Bible was pulled together many years after all these authors were dead. When you look at the four Gospels, all written by different authors, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four have different styles and a slightly different perspective on what happened in that era. Some were Jesus' disciples, some like Mark, it is assumed was a follower of one of the disciples, namely Peter. Yet they all tell the same stories of Jesus' birth, his life, his ministry, and ultimately his death. And they do it in almost exactly the same words. There may be different stories captured in each of those books, scattered in among the pages, but still, it all tells ultimately the same story as we go through the book. Today, we struggle to even get a couple witnesses at a crime to tell the same story, let alone four very diverse men from different eras. I encourage everyone to pick up a translation of the Bible, whatever is easiest for you to read and understand. Join a group, read it on your own, it doesn't really matter. Pick an area of the Bible that interests you. Find a reading plan or a study guide if you like, or just start reading. Don't make it a New Year's resolution. Just try to find the time to dig into this admittedly old and dusty book, and I pray God will enrich your lives based on his inspired words. After all, the Bible is God's self-help book for each of us.